Oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to take my mask off. Okay, I wear it while I'm around people, so don't worry. But uh, this is just so you can understand me better. I'm not going to be around people. I'm socially distanced from Phil. But today we're doing a little uh, tour of the East Village. I used to live in this neighborhood. It's a really great place. So we're going to do a little walking tour. So uh, let's go. So right now we're walking on 7th. We're right next to McSorley's Ale House. This is the oldest continuously run bar in New York City. 1854 it's been here. In fact, the uh, owner is uh, Teresa. She's a really nice lady. She, her family's owned it for decades. Uh, Woody Guthrie used to hang out there and play music. You guys know who Woody Guthrie is? The guy who sang, uh, uh, this land is your land. You know, this land is your land. This land is my land from California. Anyways, you get it. That was pretty good, by the way. Also, too, right across the street is a Russian, sorry, not a Russian, a Ukrainian church, because this used to be little Ukraine back in the day. Um, there's two waves of Ukrainian immigrants, late 1800s, as well as during uh, World War II. They fled and came to this area. We'll talk more about the Ukrainians as well, but that's a pretty old uh, church, Ukrainian church right in front of uh, McSorley's. And we're going to be crossing 7th, I'm sorry, we're going to be crossing from 7th across Cooper Square here. This is where Bowery ends. Uh, Bowery, famous for where, where CBGB was, down a little bit, a few blocks south. We're not going to go there because we don't have time, so chill out. Um, but you know, we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, anyways, this here is Cooper Union. This is Cooper Union right across the street. This is a very famous uh, college, uh, honors college. In fact, up in 2014, it was completely free to come here. And uh, it's only engineering, architecture, and fine arts. Those are the only majors you can have. Really beautiful building, started by P Peter Cooper, who uh, he's the guy who built the first steam locomotive. He invented gelatin, helped lay the transatlantic cable. Yeah, very man about town. Also, too, cool fact, George, I'm sorry, not George Washington, Abraham Lincoln gave his speech uh, declaring for the presidency in 1860 in the great hall of this building, and then afterwards crossed the street and had a beer at McSorley's. In fact, at McSorley's, they have an original wanted poster of John Wilkes Booth behind the bar. Pretty cool. So we're crossing uh, what, what was Bowery, it's now Cooper Square, and we're going to be cutting through Astor Place. It's called the East Village because in the late, like in the 1950s, 1960s, it started to kind of differentiate itself from the uh, Greenwich Village. Um, so it kind of gave itself its own name. A lot of neighborhoods here in New York City give itself, give themselves their own names to make themselves more, uh, you know, uh, exclusive, cooler, whatever you want to call it. But this is a good example of one. It was like the grittier alternative to uh, Greenwich Village. Oh, also, too, some of the alumni of this school. Milton Glaser, famous alumni here. Milton Glaser was the guy who came up with I Love New York, uh, the, the slogan. He just recently passed away, unfortunately. So anyways, the East Village, uh, home to like lots of artists, lots of, uh, you know, punk rock, a lot of like, you know, Madonna hung out a lot here uh, in like the 1970s and 80s. And here we're going to be coming through Astor Place. This is Astor Place and you're gonna see uh, this big cube here in the middle in a second. It's called, they call it the Alamo. Uh, it was made by a man named Tony Rosenthal, an artist, and you can actually spin it around. Pretty cool, it's kind of heavy. But this area is named after John Jacob Astor, who was one of the richest men to ever live. Made his fortune on real estate in New York. John Jacob Astor IV died on the Titanic. Also too here, little fact, this is where Fourth Avenue, the only thing left of Fourth Avenue is right here at the corner. There's a, there's a little sliver here, 4th Avenue up to Union Square, but the rest of it becomes Park Avenue. So a little fact about that is uh, Park Avenue exists because of Grand Central Terminal. So when Grand Central Terminal was finished in 1913, they electrified the trains. And before that, the trains were open air and left north of Grand Central. They had, to, they had, to, had open air. There was no Park Avenue. So when they were paved over because they were electrified, they created new real estate and it became Park Avenue. It became this really cool area to live and work. So the people south of the, of the station, of the terminal, uh, wanted to be cool too. So they petitioned the city and they're like, hey, we want to be cool too. Can you make us Park Avenue as well? And the city was like, all right, whatever. So they turned all of that into Park Avenue. And the only thing left of 4th Avenue is right here next to Astor Place. It goes from here to Union Square. So what we're going to do is we just looped around Cooper Union and we're going to be walking down uh, St. Mark's. This is one of the most famous streets in New York City. It comes from here on uh, what, what is the Bowery and turns into 3rd Avenue here all the way to uh, Tompkins Square. We're gonna walk that and then we're gonna loop back around. So this street is famous for being kind of like the home of counterculture, you know, punk rock, different types of things like that, Andy Warhol, all kinds of names. I'm gonna talk about them as we go. But it's called St. Mark's because St. Mark's in the Bowery is right nearby. 
and this was developed in the 1830s after the grid plan of New York was implemented, people were trying to cash in on it. And a guy bought up a lot of this land and turned it into St. Mark's for the well-to-do. You'll see a couple of those places as we walk by. How you doing, Phil? Good. Good, man. Glad. And you'll see people like selling all kinds of things here on the street, all kinds of crazy little... Uh... So over here to the right, you'll see Eliza's Local is a little bar. It's called Eliza's Local because of the little uh, house that's right here to the right. This is the Hamilton Holly House for St. Mark's. This was actually where... Uh, Eliza Hamilton lived. Eliza Hamilton. Hamilton, as in Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. You know that guy? The guy from the, the, that play that everyone pay, overpays to go see? Not anymore, because no one's going to see any Broadway right now. But she lived here for a, for a while um, in this house. Yeah, now you see Hamilton Holly House. You see lots of like, karaoke bars and stuff like here. A lot of partying goes on here. I remember I used to live around this area, and in the mornings I'd, I'd go to work, and you'd walk stepping over puke to get to the subway. So right now we're walking by uh, the old German-American Shooting Society building. This was built in 1888 in homes, uh, and it houses the V-Spot, which is a popular vegan restaurant, which my friend owns. So we're going to walk in and say what's up, see what's going on with that. Welcome. Thank you for yeah. having us. Thanks for being here. a solid handshake right there. Well, we're in, uh, we're in the store, in the restaurant, and uh, there's no one here. Is that okay? And we're socially distanced, so I think, I think we're okay. I think yeah. we're okay. Where, where are you from originally? Brooklyn. 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 Park. Born and raised in Brooklyn. I've lived all over Brooklyn. Sunset Park, Borough Park, Flatlands. But you're originally uh, Colombian, right? Your parents yeah, Colombian? family's predominantly yeah. Colombian. So, when was that in Espanol también? Si quieren. Partero. It's all in. What's it like running a business right now? Uh, very slow. Sure. But we are pushing on, you know, we're just trying to remain being essential. You're an essential it's, person. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they don't want to call us sacrificial. Sure, but, sure. Um, so it's been good. I mean, it's slow, but it's it's nice. You know, we were closed for a couple months, so that was terrible. Sure. The fact that we reopened, I'm like so happy. Yeah. But um, the neighborhood's changed right now. You know, it's a lot slower. Not as many people here. It's kind of empty, right? Kind of empty, but the food is still good. We're still hustling. My brother and I, we just hang out, play Street Fighter, do work, and That's just right. hope the customers come in. Street Fighter, that really ages us yeah. uh, as to what games we like. Not Minecraft or, you know. <laughs> Who's your person? Ken. Ken, okay. I was a oh, big Ryu Ken. guy. Ryu, he was Ryu. sexy. Ryu, and Chun Li. Chun Li was sexy. That's what I'm not saying. Sorry. That's okay. How about, how about comedy? You're a comedian, obviously. How's comedy going for you right now and all this? Comedy started picking up a little bit now. I'm doing a lot of these outdoor shows, yeah. but they're, you know, they're good and bad because it's, you're thankful that there's people there and you get to practice. Well, you're outdoors, so people are ignoring you a lot more. Sure. They're on their phone. They're in conversations. Yeah. Dude, the other day, <laughs> we did another show in a park, and the guy didn't realize that next to us was a, a barbecue birthday, and they had a DJ, oh and like a God. Brooklyn DJ. Like, yo, give it up for a Like, we had to compete with that. And then if that wasn't bad enough, the host goes up to start, because he's like, let's just do this, and fireworks. Oh, my God. Like, right there. Pop, pop. It's almost like they're trying to just interrupt the show, like on purpose. Like, what can we do now? Let's just shoot fireworks. Why not? Yeah, let's. I think they're trying to show the kids like what direction not to go. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly. Don't, don't look at the comedy. Don't yeah. look at the comedians. They're a waste. I do. Well, I guess I'll let you open up. I'll get out of your hair. Thank you, brother. And uh, check out the V Spot in East Village. And in Park Slope. And in Park Slope. So that was interesting. Anyways, the building's really cool. You can actually see up there, it has a German writing stall. It says German American Shooting Society. It says Deutsche Amerikanische Schützen Gesellschaft. Yeah, that's right. Uh, ich spreche Deutsch. But uh, up there, it also says Einigkeit macht stark, which means unity makes strength. It's interesting because a lot of the Germans who came here were escaping a Europe that was, was, was a lot of, it was very tumultuous, lots of failed revolutions in 1848. And that area is like the Arab Spring, but it happened in Europe. So a lot of people were taking off and coming here, especially Germans. Uh, and they, they valued their weapons. So a lot of shooting societies in here. So over here to the left, you have 19 through 25 St. Mark's. Uh, it's kind of covered with scaffolding, unfortunately. But that used to be the Polish national home, the Dom, they called it. It was uh, Arlington Hall, it was like a ballrooms and stuff. But starting in 1967, it became uh, the Electric Circus, which was Andy Warhol's nightclub up until 1971. It's where bands like Allman Brothers, Grateful Dead, uh, Sly and the Family Stone, Velvet Underground was the actual house band there. It's pretty cool. Uh, Andy Warhol was their manager. Really cool story about the uh, about the uh, Velvet Underground is that their first album was really popular among musicians, but it wasn't commercially successful. And Brian Eno once said that 
uh, 30,000 people bought their first album, but every one of those 30,000 people started a rock band, which is pretty cool. So that's kind of what I think about this, uh, these YouTube videos. Maybe only 10,000 people watch it, but every one of you guys is going to start a video or channel or whatever. Over here you have Mamoon's Falafel, which was established in 1971 in Greenwich Village, really popular falafel place. You have a place called uh, Search and Destroy, we just passed it. It's like one of those vintage stores, like a little like a punk rock, I guess, type clothing. I don't know, not, obviously not that hip to clothing. <laughs> Wearing a Key West hat that I got like 10 years ago. This is kind of interesting, that pink store there. Used to be a, uh, a 7-Eleven that opened in like 2009, I believe. They tried to open a 7-Eleven here and people here were like, screw that, we don't want to go there. So they basically boycotted it and it had to close down. But people win. Oh, and sadly, unfortunately, the people didn't win on this one. This was, uh, this behind me used to be the Gem Spa. Gem Spa was, uh, was here since the early 1900s. It just closed down during COVID, unfortunately. Uh, I actually included in a video that I did about St. Mark's specifically, uh, Sick Plug. <laughs> What's not so sick is that it's closed, unfortunately. What can you do? But we're crossing now uh, 2nd Avenue, still on St. Mark's. Here to the left, you have a bit of the New York Public Library. This is the Audendorfer Library. It's started by Oswald Audendorfer, who actually started a uh, newspaper here, the New Yorker Staatszeitung. Uh, yeah, yeah, ich spreche Deutsch. And he uh, used his money to kind of help his fellow um, Germans. So in 1883, he started that lending library and also a free clinic as well. And here you have the Orpheum Theater, which was typical of a lot of the theaters here. Uh, when this used to be what they called the Jewish Rialto, this whole area was basically Broadway for Jewish people, all the actors and singers. And this was one of their theaters. It's now home to Stomp, which has had over 10,000 performances. Um, it's an off-Broadway theater, 299 seats. Also further down, we're not going to go there, is where the old Fillmore East used to be. The Fillmore of Billy Grahams, if you guys know who he is, he started the Fillmore out west in California and opened a branch here. But like Jimi Hendrix recorded a very famous album there, but you name the band in the late 60s, early 70s, they played the Fillmore East. Um, so we're walking down St. Mark's, continuing down St. Mark's. The further east you go, I guess the cheaper it gets because there's not a ton of subway trains here. So the further you are from a subway train, the cheaper it gets. So this goes from First Ave, I'm sorry, from th uh, 3rd Avenue where we started, all the way to 2nd, 1st, to Avenue A, B, C, D, all the way to Alphabet City, and that's very far from the train. So. Over here to the left, you have 57 St. Mark's. This used to be home to Club 57, where artists like um, Jean-Michel Basquiat, uh, people like uh, Keith Haring got their start. They used to do kinds of you know, uh, presentations and shows here. Uh, Keith Haring is the guy who draws like the little, like the Radiant Baby and those kinds of things. And Jean-Michel Basquiat is actually the American artist whose painting sold for the most at auction in history, over $110 million at auction. So you gotta know who he is. You better know who Jean-Michel Basquiat is. Uh, he's buried here in New York, actually. Died at 27 of an overdose. Used to date Madonna. Cool guy, huh? Real cool guy. Over here on the left, you see also, you'll see the Holiday Cocktail Lounge. Holiday Cocktail Lounge. Used to be a speakeasy there. Uh, actually, there's a, there's a tunnel going underground. I've actually seen it, pretty cool. Holiday Cocktail Lounge where people like, you know, Madonna, Frank Sinatra, W.H. Auden, they used to hang out at this place. Um, when it was a speakeasy, it wasn't a holiday cocktail lounge, but it became a holiday cocktail lounge after, but it's been a bar since. This is Theater 80 St. Mark's, which is a pretty cool theater here, another off-Broadway theater. Um, back in the day, people like Billy Crystal used to usher here, actually, believe it or not. And then there's a little, like, uh, I guess, walk of fame here. What's that? How you doing? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> And here we have like a walk of fame here. You have people like Joan Rivers, Dom DeLuise on the ground. Pretty cool, they just kind of did it on, uh, did it by the, for the heck of it. And then this used to be a speakeasy as well. It used to be Scheib's Tavern. The cool story about that is it was actual speakeasy run, you know, obviously very shady beginnings. And in 1964, the new owners of the place were looking, at the, looking around and in the basement, they found two safes and inside one of them was $2 million. And so they contacted the former owner and the former owner got, got the money, obviously probably smart because the reason that the money was there was because of a murder. They actually, someone had murdered uh, the previous owner uh, for that money. So it's kind of messed up. But yeah, we're crossing now First Avenue and we're continuing on um, St. Mark's and we're going to be going to Tompkins Square and you can see all the people outside eating. It's very nice. East Village is actually even very nice during all this because the people have been putting their stuff outside and all their tables. 
Little known fact, this is a lot of restaurants here taking advantage of this because before COVID, it cost like 20 something thousand dollars to have outdoor seating like this. So with, with COVID and the, uh, the city allowing people to do it for nothing in parking spots, a lot of restaurant owners are like, yeah, sweet. So they all put it out there. In fact, some restaurants have more seating outside than they ever had inside because they're so small. All right, so we're gonna cross. Careful, Phil, you don't wanna get run over by a bicycle. Bicyclists in this city are nuts. You can quote me on that. I would never ride a bike. It's like it's super dangerous. I've seen multiple people get hit on. I want to cross here because we're going to see a, we're going to see a famous building here on the right in a second. This building on the right is going to be the Physical Graffiti Building. This is the building from the 1975 Led Zeppelin album Physical Graffiti. They shot this for the album cover. That's the one with cashmere on it. Uh, you know that song that I guess. Puff Daddy remade brutally for the Godzilla remake. They want da -na -na, da -na -na, da -na -na, da -na, that one. This is it. And also too, uh, also too, they shot Waiting on a Friend, the video for Waiting on a Friend, the Rolling Stones video, where Keith Richards and him meet up at these this little and you see it's at the bottom, it says physical graffiti. How cute, huh? Totes fresh. At this building here, they actually took one of the floors off to fit it on the album cover. Uh, Led Zeppelin, yeah, pretty cool band. I don't know if you guys know who they are. But they actually came up with the name Led Zeppelin here. I read this in their book, Hammer of the Gods. They were talking about how it would be cool if Jimmy Page and Robert Plant started a band. This is before uh, they were all together as Led Zeppelin. They were mentioning this to the manager, and the manager was like, are you kidding? That, that band would go down like a lead balloon. Yeah, a Led Zeppelin. But lead is spelled L-E-A-D. But they changed it to L-E-D because too many people wouldn't mispronounce it and call it Lead Zeppelin. I know a lot of stuff. And you're getting this for free. Huh? How about that? Pretty awesome. Anyways, we're almost at Tompkins Square Park, which is named after Daniel Tompkins, a former vice president of the United States, former New York governor. He ceded this land of the city. In the mid-1800s, it became a park. Really cool uh, part of the East Village and Alphabet City. Uh, big protest park. In fact, they, the, Robert Moses put lots of railings and different, uh, I guess, gates and things inside to kind of keep people from... from uh, congregating too much. Also too here to the left you have Crip Dogs, which is a late night hot dog spot. All right. People are always eating and getting drunk and then going there. And then next to it is a place called Please Don't Tell. It's like this little speakeasy where you have to go into the, so you go into Crip Dogs and you go to the actual phone booth and you take the phone off and you tell them you're there and then the phone booth opens and you go into this bar. You get for the privilege of paying $19 for a drink. Uh, but it's like a little speakeasy. The reason they did that apparently is because they couldn't get their own license for liquor and alcohol, so they're just basically piggybacking off of Crip Dogs. So it's like an actual speakeasy. Kind of cool. So here is Tompkins Square. This is Avenue A. So as you go east, uh, you get further and further away from the trains, and it gets a little more dangerous, especially back in the day in the 80s. This used to be like heroin city, pretty much. And they used to say the further east you went, the more dangerous it was. So if you were on Avenue A, you were all right. If you were on B, you were brave. If you were on C, you were crazy. And if you were on D, you were dead. Ah, how cute. So we're going to take a right here, and we're going to go down um, Avenue A for a second, then we're going to cut into Tompkins Square. So out here, they'll sell all kinds of stuff. You'll see these tables and stuff. People will have books, CDs, DVDs. You can just buy stuff for like a dollar. People are trying to get rid of their stuff. Or stuff that fell off of a truck. You know, those kind of things. Here to the right, this place is so great. This is called Ray's Candy Store. This place has been here since 1974. This man named Ray Alvarez opened it. It's a really cool little, like, old school shop. His name's Ray Alvarez, but he had changed his name. He is actually, he's actually Persian, he's from Iran. And he changed his name to Ray Alvarez because there were so many Puerto Ricans back then. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna fit in. It's kind of funny. Over here to the left, you have Niagara, which used to have a place called A7. It was, a, it was like a, a nightclub kind of area in the back where, where they say the hardcore movement was born. So bands like Bad Brains, uh, Black Flag, they got their start there. And over here is the Pyramid Club. And the Pyramid Club, you don't, have to, you don't have to film it. Keep it on me, I'll get, I'll get B-roll. But that's where uh, like a lot of the drag, and it was open in 1979, but a lot of drag queens, RuPaul, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana, very offbeat. That's, what, that's kind of what the East Village is kind of famous for, for being a place for all the like, weirdos back in the 80s and 90s. Eh, not so much anymore, a lot of bankers and rich people. So we're gonna cut into Tompkins Square here. Like I said, you can see all the gates and things, how it's all organized. I used to live right around here, 6th Street. They actually have a plaque there commemorating where I used to live and a statue of me. Just look for it next time you come visit. We don't have time to go see it though. 
but this is kind of the marker between um, Alphabet City and the East Village. We'll do Alphabet City in another video. Over here to the right, you'll see a really cool tree. This is called the Hare Krishna tree. In the late 1960s, this is where Hare, the Hare Krishna started. The Hare Krishna is, a, is like this, yeah, it's like this, almost like a cult here in the United States. You got these guys who chant Hare Krishna. It came from obviously out east, but they started out here out west under this tree. The Hare Krishna tree in the late 1960s, George Harrison used to come here and chant and sing. For that religion here to the left, you have a temperance fountain. In the late 1800s, temperance was a big thing. This is before Prohibition. Remember, people were very against alcohol and its effects on the poor, etc. So this man here made temperance fountains all over the city, all over the country. But this is one of them. And the idea is to give poor people an option to drink something other than alcohol. Drink water. What a buzzkill, huh? You hear that? You can hear all the birds. In fact, you can hear hawks a lot of times here. You'll see hawks just hanging out, which is pretty cool. And falcons. The peregrine falcon makes its home here. I've seen they have peregrine falcons pass through. The peregrine falcon's the fastest bird on the planet, makes dives up to 200 miles an hour. And you could be just sitting here in the park, taking in sun, and this giant falcon will just park it next to you. Not, you know, you just roll over wrong, it'll tear your face off. Pretty cool. I'll show you guys a cool thing inside this here area where the restrooms are. Don't worry, we're not gonna go into the restrooms, or right? I'm not some kind of creep. Unless you guys uh, want to. Maybe that's for, I'll save that for Patreon. I don't have a Patreon. I should start one. So in here is the memorial to General Slocum, which was the worst accident and the worst loss of life in New York City history uh, before 9-11. In 1904, a uh, ship that was being commissioned to take a lot of uh, children and women to a picnic in Long Island sank in the East River because of negligence, burned, and 1,021 people died. Germans because they were all from this neighborhood. It kind of ended this neighborhood because before that, this whole neighborhood was vibrant. It was kind of dying off. There as many Germans, but when that happened, but when it happened, it kind of was like a big, big problem, and then people just kind of started leaving the neighborhood. It was a cool skate park they made. Sometimes people get very upset when you when they see a camera. I don't know if you guys heard that. Some guy got really mad at seeing the camera. Yeah, just keep walking. You keep moving. It's weird, like when you walk around with a gimbal and a camera person, it's way different than when you just walk around and taking pictures yourself. Okay. Now we're gonna be taking a left onto 10th here in a second. This neighborhood is pretty safe. People always ask about that. You'll get your stuff happening here every now and then though, because there's still a mix of people, you know, somewhat of a mix. Like I said, further east you go, it's not as expensive. There's like projects and things like that. So it is like a diverse area, this whole area. But here to the left, you have a Carpatho Russian Orthodox Church. This is kind of a cool building. It was actually designed by James Renwick Jr., who designed uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral. He designed also Grace Church. He was commissioned to design Grace Church at the age of 23, young guy. But he designed this church, and we're going to be taking a left on the street. So this here to the left is the church I was just talking about, and we're walking on 10th. Now it's interesting too, unlike Greenwich Village, which is directly to the west of us, this area still has the streets numbered. And the reason is because we are on the grid here. In Greenwich Village, you're off the grid because the people there had mapped out all their streets before 1811, and they didn't want them touched. They liked the way they were organized. Here, it was all mapped out. And by the way, this whole area used to belong to a man named Peter Stuyvesant, who was the director general of the Dutch West India Company when it was New Amsterdam. When the British took over in 1664 and renamed it New York, he kind of just retired to his huge plot of land up here. And for generations, his family lived here, and it was all just pretty much marshland. Like I said, it wasn't until the 1800s that they started to develop places like St. Mark's. But Peter Stuyvesant, a very famous peg leg guy, peg leg director of the Dutch, Dutch West India Company, but he owned all this land. It was all his land. Here to the left, you have a place called the Russian and Turkish Baths. This was opened in 1892. Kind of interesting, it's been there since, it's a super cool place, I actually have a little pass for it. You go in there and you just like sweat out the toxins, they have saunas, they have a Russian room where it's like 190 degrees in this big bucket of cold water and you dump it on yourself. But it's very, very like old school, lots of different people from the neighborhood, people like a huge mix of people kind of go in there. And also too, the owners, uh, they're two guys, they co-own it. 
they hate each other so much and they don't like working with each other that they split the entire place into different weeks. So like they have weeks for one guy and weeks for the other guy. And if you have a pass for one of the guy's weeks, it doesn't work for the other guy's weeks. <laughs> and they like treat them as separate businesses. It's pretty funny. So we're taking a quick walk through this area. People always chime in after I post these videos and they're like, hey, you should, go to, you should have gone to this place, you should have gone to this place. This isn't supposed to be a complete video. I'd be here for like three hours. I'm trying to give you guys a general sense of what the neighborhood is like. So chill out. Enjoy the video. Good Lord. Here we're back at first. We're looping around. And you're going to see a, uh, an area on the right called the Theater for the New City. And this was a theater. It's actually like a theater complex. But people like Tim Robbins used to do things there, act there. So this is pretty lucky. At work on First and St. Mark's is a famous East Village artist and a friend of mine. Let's go talk to him. We're really lucky to be able to stumble on an East Village legend. This is Jim Power, the mosaic man right here. He's been doing mosaics around the East Village for 30 years. Is that right, Jim? Uh, it's actually 35. 35 years. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But uh, uh, So what made you want to get started doing this? Well, I got out of the service, something in me, I'm Irish originally, Waterford, something in our blood about building walls. What's your favorite thing about New York? The, absolutely, the amount of people from everywhere. The diversity. We're all so alike. We live in a town here, our town, this village, legit, half a mile in every direction from where I'm standing. There's over half a million people here. We got everybody here. We, we got everybody here and we got no trouble. What is the matter with the rest of the world? What would be advice you give to an aspiring artist? Separate early your art and your living. Take care of the living and then your art will go smoothly. If you don't, you're gonna pay unnecessary dues. Okay, if you're a musician, dues. get a job that you're music. <laughs> or you're not, to be honest with you. If you don't have a job, you're not a musician. So you play music, who gives a shit? Be responsible. Even though that thing about getting a job hit pretty close to home, it was good to see Jim. Back to the tour. You can see all the tenement buildings in this area too. This is what you'll see in any neighborhood. I've talked about this in other videos. But you'll see the tenement buildings in any neighborhood that traditionally had immigrants because like I said before in other videos, these buildings were literally designed for immigrants because immigrants were the ones overcrowding into neighborhoods. So they designed these buildings uh, starting in 1835, actually. And over time, the buildings evolved with different laws that were passed. Now, there's one in 1867, 1879, and 1901, three different laws. Before 1901, they're called old law. After 19, 1901, they're called new law tenement buildings. And that all dictates like what they were allowed to have in, what they were required to have in when they were built. Since then, all of them have been given running water and all that stuff, but before that, there was like, you know, before the new law, some of the buildings had like one bathroom per floor, that kind of stuff. Yeah, you get like different, you know, weird like apartment layouts now. Like you'll have different apartments. You have apartments with like a bath tub in the kitchen, that kind of stuff. So we're walking down 9th towards 2nd Avenue. See lots of four lease signs here too. This is neighborhoods losing lots of spots, I guess, to COVID and also to rents. And you can see old buildings like this one here to the left like a little carriage house with a, with a garage there at the bottom. And you also see the fire escapes. They're very typical of those tenement buildings I was talking to you about. A lot of people like to go out there and you know smoke or talk on the phone or whatever. It's kind of a nice little thing to have. It's like having a little balcony. You're not supposed to, but people do it anyway. So it was, it was a very German neighborhood uh, from the mid 1800s to the late 1800s, early 1900s. And afterwards it became actually a very big Jewish neighborhood. In fact, from 1881 to like the early 1900s, Two million Jews came to the United States. A lot of them stayed here in New York and they settled in the Lower East Side, but a lot of them moved up here because this is pretty much next to the Lower East Side. Remember, this is before it was the East Village. This was all just pretty much the Lower East Side, just one massive area. So this became a more Jewish neighborhood and you're gonna see something up here on the right in a second that harkens back to that. But to the left here, you're gonna see a restaurant called Veselka. The Selka was actually a restaurant since 1954, but it was taken over in 1974, which is a Ukrainian, it's a Ukrainian restaurant. Pretty cool. It's a really good diner. They make really good like pierogies and borscht. It's one of my favorites in the city, actually. I'm trying to get these guys to do a video with me. We'll see. It's hard. People are like, who are you? What is this, YouTube? I don't know what you're talking about. Give me money. I wish I had money. Now we're turning right. This is now 2nd Ave. 
and you're going to see a cool thing here on the on the sidewalk. This is what's called the uh, Yiddish Walk of Fame. They have lots of different actors from back when this was, like I said, the Jewish Rialto. This was all like different theaters. There's still some of the theaters are left. In fact, the old Fillmore East uh, used to be a Jewish theater, as did the Orpheum, as did Webster Hall, which is just in the north of us. But you have these uh, squares here on the ground. These are all with different names of famous uh, Jewish actors from this area. And these were in front of what used to be the 2nd Avenue Deli, which is right here. A man named Abe Lebo Wall opened this. <laughs> Lebo Wall, sorry, I got my heart. Terrible. Stop laughing, Phil. I'm not good at pronouncing. Abe Lebo Wall opened this deli, but unfortunately in 1996, he was murdered outside of his deli during a robbery. And in 2006, uh, his uh, brother moved it out of here. They actually have locations in uptown, which actually, it's really good, really good deli. And then here is St. Mark's in the Bowery. This was on the site of what used to be Peter Stuyvesant's chapel here. Uh, he, he built a chapel on his property uh, in, uh, in what, like 1600s. But this building was built in 1799, making it the second oldest uh, church building in New York uh, behind uh, St. Paul's Chapel. All right, let's cross. This is a believe wall park. And Peter Stuyvesant is actually buried here too. Also really important, like the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, the directors of this Episcopal church actually opened up the basement and places like that for artists. People like Sam Shepard, uh, Carl Sandburg, they used to do pieces here. This is also too, by the way, facing due south. This is actually facing south, which uh, most of the streets in New York are not. Most of the avenues aren't actually facing true south. This is facing true south. We're actually like a little slanted on the island of Manhattan. You see some really pretty like street here with all the trees and very fancy here. Very fancy to live on this kind of street. Really pretty like architecture, but I wanted to show you a cool house over here. Hey, I used to live in this neighborhood. I lived here for three years back when I was a lawyer, back when I made enough money to live in this neighborhood. I can't anymore, and I live in Ridgewood, Queens, which I'll do a video of one of these days. So you can see all these like, you know, little stoops, which by the way, comes from the word stoop, which is Dutch for step, because the idea of stoops actually originated with the Dutch and the way they built houses right next to each other. And you needed to have separate entrances for the servants. Uh, and one for the people who lived there. So they, that was underneath. They had to make those steps, the stoops, because there's no access to the back, so you couldn't have a back entrance. This is a cool house here. This is called the Hamilton Fish House. You can see the uh, little marker there. It was Hamilton Fish. He was actually a former governor of New York. Uh, was a descendant, well, he was in the family, a descendant of uh, Peter Stuyvesant. All right, so we're coming up here on the right. You can see Shake Shack. This is not the original Shake Shack. The original one was opened in Madison Square Park. In fact, uh, it was started as a cart. Danny Meyer, the famous chef, started as a cart, got so popular in 2004, became a brick and mortar store, and now it's all over the world. It's like in Dubai, Las Vegas, it's nuts. And they're just pumping out their steam and the smell all over this place. You smell it whenever you walk by here. It's actually not that good of a smell, go figure. Burgers and fries don't smell that good just being pumped out. And now we've kind of looped back around, and we're back at Astor Place. But I'm gonna keep walking this way. Over there in the distance, you can see the Con Edison building. That's the Con Edison building near Union Square. Union Square is not far from here. I'll do another video on that, don't worry. Plus we gotta get away from that sound, that sounds brutal. Now we're kinda of getting to like the west part of the East Village. Once you get to Broadway, it's kind of like the, the uh, end of it. That's when you start getting into Greenwich Village. The East Village, pretty, pretty uh, quiet, gotten a little more expensive. Someone also too, on the last video, someone, I was mentioning the idea of gentrification. Someone was saying that gentrification isn't a bad thing because it cleans up the neighborhood, safer. That's true. But the question is at what cost and who is being taken into account during that process? The problem ends up being that you end up curating the experience of a neighborhood and don't let it grow organically and that usually happens at the cost of certain people. You, you, you don't provide low income housing, you don't provide different businesses and things like that that can cater to a certain type of person. So there goes your diversity. There goes your socioeconomic and your ethnic diversity. And that's what makes a city interesting. That's what makes a neighborhood interesting. So you're actually killing it while you try to save it, which doesn't make any sense. 
As much as we don't like it, that's what a city is. A city is kind of chaotic. It has to be, because that's where the ideas, the culture comes from. Otherwise, it's, it's sterile. It's Disney World. Who wants that? That's not a city. And that's what's slowly happening to different parts. So that's the thing that the city has to take care of. Those are policies that the city does. So get involved in your city politics. You should know who your city council person is, because they're the ones who do that kind of stuff. They're the ones who give the huge tax breaks to real estate developers. They're the ones who don't do enough for small business, etc. So now we're walking up what is 4th Avenue. We were talking about this earlier. The tiny sliver of 4th Avenue that's left. And we're going to walk east on 10th. I'm sorry, west on 10th. We're going to end here shortly. But if you took this down any further, like maybe three more blocks, you get to 14th Street, which is where Union Square is. By the way, Union Square, I mentioned this in the last video, but it's one of the squares created where Broadway intersects Main Avenue in New York. We talked about how Broadway's the left, even after the grid was implemented, but Broadway cuts west. Well, it intersects with 4th Avenue, and it creates Union Square. It intersects with 5th, Madison Square, 6th, Herald Square, 7th, Times Square, etc. I mentioned in the last one. I wanted to just walk you guys over here and finish the tour here in a second in front of this building. The really cool building here. This is Grace Church. This building was uh, built in 1846. This is on land uh, owned by a man named Br uh, Brevoort. Brevoort with two O's. Brevoort, I guess, is a Dutch name. But uh, because he was given the land over, he, he tapped his uh, like a, a family member, this kid uh, named James Renwick Jr., who was an architect, to design it. That's a really cool Gothic, neo-Gothic building. There was a big neo-Gothic revival in New York City in the mid-1800s. Lots of neo-Gothic buildings going up then, like this, like uh, St. Patrick's went up eventually neo-Gothic, the Brooklyn Bridge went up in neo-Gothic, uh, Trinity Church went up in neo-Gothic, lots of that. Really cool building too, like actually, well, before COVID, I guess, you could just pop in and on the week weekends, I'm sorry, during the weekdays, there'd be an organ player in the back just playing organ and you could just kind of sit there and meditate. Pretty nice. I'm not going to say I fell asleep there ever, because I didn't. I was meditating. But this is all Grace Church, and this is kind of where I wanted to end the tour. Uh, it's very sad, the end of the tour. It makes me want to cry. But uh, look, sometimes two people will say, oh, you should have included this, you should have included that. Look, this isn't meant to be an entire tour. It's meant to be a quick walkthrough with your bud, me, ah, uh, your bud. So it's not a complete thing. If you want the complete thing, come to New York, look me up. Huh? That's what it's going to cost you. Because that's, <laughs> all right, chill out. It's not going to cost that much. But yeah, we just did a whole free tour, a free walk in of New York, of uh, New York's East Village. Really cool neighborhood. I love this neighborhood. It's my favorite neighborhood in Manhattan, I'd say. A lot of art, a lot of music. I ran a free comedy show here, actually, for four and a half years before all this COVID thing started. Uh, really fun. Nice little sick plug there as well. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. If you ever come to New York, look me up. <sighs> I don't know how to do this. I'm not good at saying goodbyes, guys. I don't know what to tell you. But uh, me and Phil are just going to go hang like two sick bros. Please follow me on uh, Instagram, you know, because that's apparently where you have to prove to people you exist. And, uh, you know, please subscribe. Please subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel, so please subscribe. That helps me a lot. Uh, and I just gave you guys a free tour of the East Village. Come on. That's the least you can do. But, yeah, anyways, <laughs> see y'all later.